the world's cuisines, few evoke intrigue and respect like Japanese food due to its exoticism. Chef on Chef returns this time with the spotlight on this delicate culinary craft from the land of the rising sun that places integral weight on raw seafood, fresh produce and generational techniques perfected by intuition of the chef for the ingredients of the seasons. This is Chef on Chef, Season 2, Washoku. Countless new spots have popped up around town and among them is Hibiki in the equally new and posh shops at Four Seasons Place. Helmed by Chef Makoto Saito, or more warmly known as Chef Sam among his regulars, the establishment is only a few months old, but Chef Makoto brings to the table his craft, which he has been perfecting for close to two decades. もともとの意味はハーモニーであったり、ハートムービング、心を響くっていう感動するとかっていう意味なんです。まあ、皆さんウイスキーの名前で響きっていうのは覚えやすいんで、そういう意味でもまあ覚えやすい名前であってでも実
A warm, hearty soup is next, one laced with tradition, cooked with hamel, pike eel, and seasonal mushrooms. Oh, are you gonna do it with me? Wow. Okay. It smells really good. Mmm, this is super Japanese. To make sure. So you pour a little bit and then you eat a little bit. I mean, wow, this. I think this reminds me of the first time I ever had a uh, dobin mushi. Um, also in a sushi restaurant, and uh, I'm, I'm there right now in my mind. I, I'm, I'm back then. I'm uh, I'm 18 years younger, or something like that. Now. 18 years old. Yeah. Oh, I wish. I wish. This soup is like the fountain of youth. Pike eel. It's called hamo. Um, is considered one of the most difficult ingredients to use in Japanese cuisine. Very difficult. There's so many bones in there that you can't take out. Someone eventually developed a technique where you can cut through the bones. Only, only bone. But not all the way through the flesh. And they cut it into such small pieces that when it's cooked, you can't even taste the bones. Condiments often an afterthought, are not compromised either. This is the wasabi, fresh wasabi. Especially this one is a mis uh, misho, two types. This one is a red, red ho horse radish. Red. red. Red and blue. Okay. Mm. Red one is a goes away with a fish. It's a, what do you call it? It's a amami. The red one is a red one, and it's a red one. Beef to go this This reminds Chef Makoto of a Malaysian habit that puzzles him. One is uh, wasabi, put in the soy sauce and uh, like a mix. Wasabi is kono osakana no ni nokkete sono mama shoyu o tsukete taberu no ga ii desu ne. Mazenai. Nande sore ga machigae to yitte kite da. Naru naru. Nande te yudo. The freshness of Japanese seafood becomes front and center in the following dish. Okay. It's so much softer, the uni when it hasn't been treated with any of the uh, preservatives. Halfway into the meal, the chefs began to find parallels in what they do. The age-old art of omakase. Everybody talks about Japanese food as an omakase experience. What does omakase mean to you? Actually, here, omakase means uh, all day change. All day change. omakase is really the person カウンター10席しかなくてメニューないんですよ。ドリンクも食事のメニューも。プラス座ってここで会話をしながらサーブしていくんですよね。それが本当のおまかせですよね。And <笑> One of the most difficult part is making rice, mm. for, in my opinion. Because we can make good rice uh, one day, but every day, same condition is uh, very difficult. Especially in Japan, is, uh, we have uh, five seasons, rainy season, temperature and the humid, every time different. So we need to 
adjust water amount and how many minutes soak. But Chef Makoto's attention to his rice pays off with his eight-piece sushi course. It's the perfect balance to bring out the best of any seafood he tops it with. Kawahagi this. Thank you. Firefish. It's like the best. Kawahagi. Tr tr trigger fish, right? Same. Mm -hmm. tr trigger fish. Mm. That taste I just had was like a umami bomb. When you put it in your mouth, you go, mmm. I think that's important. No need to talk. Yeah, no need to talk. The main thing is. Yeah. And, and with no analysis necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Then comes Ishigaki Gai, an enticing clam sushi. The Ishigaki Gai. It's like a tori guy. The next seafood chef Makoto spotlights is an exquisite baby squid. To illustrate its freshness, he peels off the skin whole. A feat only possible in the freshest catch. Chef Makoto then whips out a bluefin tuna. This time, he uses another rice. Can the chefs tell the difference? Some bluefin tuna from Boston. Boston and the fish market stay two days or one day and they come to Malaysia. He uses two types of rice for one sushi meal. Now normal restaurant using not the out of restaurant using the red vinegar, red vinegar again. Yeah. This one, Edo style. The Honjitsu no Supisharu or pièce de résistance comes from Kyushu, the southernmost Japanese main island. Jeff shares a simple tip to better enjoy sushi just in time for the glorious uni. So what I like to do when I eat the sushi is I like to make the, the fish go on the side first because whatever touches your tongue first when you eat something, you get the most flavor from it. So if you put the rice on your tongue first, your sushi is going to taste like rice. But if you put the uni in your tongue first, you're going to taste a lot of uni. Mm. When you have good sushi, you just want to have more good <laughs> sushi. <laughs> Next is anago, or saltwater conga eel. Not to be confused for its barbecued version, unagi. It's a Okinawa salt. Mm. For sushi, how does it make sushi the better? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When you go sit down and eat sushi, uh, you know, at a really good sushi place, it's, it's gonna taste better than the sushi you make yourself. Uh, or sushi that you pay to eat tastes better than the sushi you make yourself. To understand just how much precision and art goes into Japanese cuisine, look no further than tamago. How well is it prepared? There's a learning curve to making good tamago yaki and uh, it's got to be cooked in a square frying pan layer by layer and you sort of cook one layer of egg and you flip it over flip it over flip it over slide that new bit to the front pour in the next layer put that under the first layer and roll again and again and again and build up the layers by layers and layers I think that it's um, I mean look it's bright yellow all the way through you can see the layers, but they're definitely married together. I think this represents a high level of skill. Probably the nicest I've seen in KL. With the Mont Blanc dessert comes the perfect ending to the night. A glass of Martel XO cognac, which takes Chef Makoto back to his days of apprenticeship. Actually, my, my master really like this. Oh, wow. So after working, sometimes I bring in bar and order this. This takes you back to your childhood. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think you're a perfect ambassador for KL. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it's great to have you here. 
To me, sushi restaurants like this, very intimate personal space, and it's a shame if you don't get to connect with the chef himself. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for today. It's been wonderful. At Hibiki, Chef Makoto's personality shines through in cuisine and hospitality. Dining at Hibiki is getting to know the chef himself. The sushi is the same as jazz or haiku. It's the same as 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 the Chef Makoto visits Chef Jun Wong at Kikubari. Where she is known for her progressive Japanese cuisine. And will her Japanese French fusion impress? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode of Chef on Chef. First class, there was. 2人のののラッキーなカップルに今日の食事のジェフとチューさんがしてくれたお食事をプレゼントしてます。Log on to www.firstclass.com.my to win. Chef on Chef is brought to you by Martel, the oldest of the great cognac houses. Be curious. Drink responsibly.